Go right ahead, Nasi. Oh, Miss Family. Um uh, that I want to thank you for <clears throat> giving us this leading. I wish you had it uh had it recorded it, but uh, we gotta go back and pick this up, you know, and uh it's gotta be recorded. Well, because I, we I'm going, I'm going, whenever you tag me in, I see I we'll we'll get it recorded. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm ready to go with this after you, but after you. <laughs> what I want us to understand, family, hopefully, that things are set in motion, not mystically, not uh, um, unbeknownst, something just happens. We got to start looking at ourselves. And this is the, the first thing I want to deal with is that we've got to look at ourselves as who we really are, as opposed to who we've been told that we are. And this has everything to do with the inversion. And now we've been told and made to believe and feel that we are without power, we are negative. We cannot absorb this. We cannot do this. Then everything that is occurring is occurring outside of us. And we're trying to make contact with the outside force so that we can change some things within ourselves and change some things on the planet. That's how we've been taught. And we've been made to believe it to the degree that we have become very confused about the whole issue of who we are, our relationship to, you know, the essence of what exists as our physical body, as our physical world. So we've really been in a state of stagnation and really total confusion. But hopefully we've come to a point now where we can start talking and pinpointing, you know, everything being centered around us. Yes. As a, whatever we read in the biblical writings or whatever, whatever depiction, image, symbol that they're using, I don't care. It's all going to lead back to you, us. It's going to lead back to us. It's about us. It's about us. And I'm going to pick up with this concept of language now because we're using and we got to understand language we really got to understand language and i'm gonna try to you know give us a little bit more understanding hopefully about language you know there's what we call dualistic language holistic language and then we got what we call nonverbal language you know, we talk about telepathy, being able to project our thoughts, et cetera, without speaking. Etai introduced to us about the significance of the sigils, you know, so that we wouldn't talk and we would be able to bring forth things from our inner subconsciousness where things lie dormant, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm going to use a writing. Uh, this is a brother. His name is Robert Lanzer. He's an MD. He's a physicist, scientist, etc. at Wake Forest University. And uh, an outstanding, outstanding uh, brother. Conscious mind, conscious individual. He writes this book called Biocentrism. Biocentrism. And let me define biocentrism for you, relating to life. So biocentrism, everything he's talking about is about life, but he's talking about it within language that can become, you know, very challenging for all of us that have been under the influence of dualistic language, dualistic language. And I want you to bear with me because 
we got to understand how to get out of this. And we can't keep perceiving it to be difficult, complex, you know, hard, impossible, and all of that. Those are terms that has been given to us simply because we've been in this dualistic way of viewing things. We got to let it go. We got to let it go. So biocentrism, relating to life, having life as its principle, P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L, principle fact. Life as the principle. So everything we're talking about has been is about life. But everybody believes that this death cycle, this death syndrome, everybody is, you know, on a death syndrome. But now, here, life would be the opposite of death in dualistic way of thinking. So, inversion, conversion. Now, once you will, you know, fall under the influence of an inversion, you are easy to convert now. You are easy to be brought under another mode of thinking, another mode of viewing things. And this is this duality that got all of us trapped. It's got us trapped. So I'm going to read a little something from his book and help to try to, because I think Amar had asked a question a few days ago about language, you know, and uh, I don't know if he got the answer, the response that uh, he was looking for. But all of this, you know, is a means of communicating. However, it's verbal, nonverbal, you know, sign languages, you understand? However, it's a mode of communication. Okay, language may not be the best word. Let's say communication, you know. So bear with me. We're picking it up on page 35 in the book Biocentrism. He said, we can start with everything visual that is currently being perceived all around us. This book you are holding, for example, language, here we go now, Language and customs say that it all lies outside of us in the external world. Okay, the book, you know, and everything that you're viewing, customs have taught us our belief is that it's what? Lying outside in the external world. Please hear me. Yet, we've already seen that nothing can be perceived that is not already interacting with our consciousness. So this is why it's so important to understand consciousness beyond what we have been made to believe consciousness is, and that is just what? Awareness. We can't just accept consciousness as being awareness. Awareness has to be a, you know, an integral part of everything then. It can't be just some separate because I know something, I become aware, and because what I don't know, you understand, know is not connected. It can't be like that. Continuing on. It says, we've already seeing that nothing can be perceived that is not already interacting with our consciousness, which is why biocentrism axiom number one is that nature or the so-called external world must be correlative with consciousness. It's got to be connected. We keep talking about oh, wholeness, wholeness, you know, and we really have not understood it. One does not exist without the other. The world out there or you don't exist without one another. 
it's all connected. What this means is that when we do not look at the moon, and we just got through talking about the moon, right? We got right. just got to talking about it. The moon effectively vanishes. I read that again. What this means is that when we do not look at the moon, the moon effectively vanishes, which subjectively is obvious enough if we still think of the moon and believe that it is out there orbiting the earth <laughs> or accept that other people are probably watching it all such thoughts are still mental constructs that's correct the bottom line issue here is if no consciousness existed at all in what sense would the moon persist and in what form would it persist so now it brings everything back in simplicity to you and I and all things that we see in the external world is interconnected. It's interconnected. We just may not understand how, but we got to start with it being connected. That's the energetic, you understand, process that we have to start with, that it is connected. Now, I'm going to skip over to the next page and pick up as we walk through this. If you consciously try to access the luminous energy feel, visual part of the brain, you might at first be frustrated. You might tap the back of your skull and feel a particular vacuous sense of nothingness but that's because it was unnecessary exercise <laughs> you are already accessing the visual portion of the brain with every glance that you take <laughs> but again now if you see yourself not being an integral part you can't see how you connect it <laughs> You got to see this being connected. He goes on to say, he said, look now at anything. He says, custom has told us that what we see is out there, outside ourselves. And such a viewpoint is fine and necessary in terms of language and utility in terms of language and utility as in quote please pass the butter that's over there in the quote but now he said well that's good in terms of the utility of the butter being on the table or out of the you know off the sink or out of the refrigerator he said that's all well and good he said but make no mistake, this visual image of that butter, that is the butter itself, actually exists only inside your brain. Now, I know that's hard for us to really grasp. That's it, though. I know. <laughs> I know it. But we got to walk through this until we can understand this. They said, that is its location inside your brain. It is the only place visual images are perceived and cognized. The only place. The only place, Nasi. Some may imagine that there are two worlds, one out there, and a separate one being cognized inside the skull. But the two world models is a myth. It's a myth. 
nothing is perceived except the perceptions themselves and nothing exists outside of consciousness so now Etai was giving us an example here about the you know, descent into the lower chakras well if you go from consciousness yes. downward yes devolving away from your high consciousness what would you you never know, recognize without any consciousness if consciousness is everything so consciousness have to be the actual creative force but if that force is what devolving away from its creativity the further it get away from its highest point the less you understand you know power can be exist if that makes sense <laughs> of course it does absolutely continue on it says only one visual reality is extent and there it is right there the outside world is therefore located within the brain or what the world called the mind of course this is so astounding for many people yeah it didn't astound at everybody even if it is obvious to those who study the brain so don't we don't have to you know look at ourselves and see how it has you know astounded us you know that have not been studying the brain don't know the difference between the brain and the mind <laughs> that it become possible to overthink the issue and come up with an attempted refutation yeah but what about someone born blind and what about touch if things are not out there how can we feel them <laughs> none of that changes the reality not touch least. too occurs only within consciousness or the brain every aspect of that butter its existence on every level is not outside of one's being now he said the real mind twister to all of this and the reason some are lowest to accept what should be patently obvious is that its implication destroys the anti house of cars worldview well who who want the worldview that exists to be destroyed <laughs> we should want it to be that's right but because we don't understand the world that we think is outside of us we want that outside of us to be but how can you destroy that outside of you if it ain't if you don't destroy what's inside you first now listen carefully now it says let me go back over there the real mind twisted to all of this and the reason some are lowest to accept what should be patently obvious is that its implications destroy the entire house of worldview that we have embraced all of our lives that's right if that is consciousness or mind right in front of us then consciousness extends indefinitely to all that is cognized calling into question the nature and reality of something we would devote an entire chapter to space now not what two or three days ago Etai was talking about space and how space is what you understand full of energy well if it's full of energy and you're full of energy 
What's the difference between you and space? If that before us is consciousness, it can change the area of scientific focus from the nature of a cold, inert, external universe to issues such as how your consciousness relates to mine and to that of animals. But now here we come to the major point. But we will put aside for the moment questions of unity, consciousness. Now we keep talking about the significance of consciousness being entangled, you know, saying tied to everything. We we've been emphasizing that. He said, but we're gonna put aside for the moment, okay? Any questions of the unity of consciousness? He said, let it suffice to say that any overarching, now overarching means dominating, you know, or embracing all else. So if we say overarching means dominating and it means embracing everything, then he said the survival that overarching unity of consciousness is not just difficult or impossible to prove, but it's fundamentally incompatible with dualistic language. And we started off talking about language, you know, because Amari had asked a question about this language, you know. So communication, you know, is not always verbal, you know, right. but language is what? An integral part of everything because language is consciousness. Consciousness is language. But because we disconnect things, you know, in this lower physical realm that we devolved into, it has really, really uh, become very difficult for us to understand. I go back again. Let it suffice to say that in an overarching, dominating, embracing all else, unity of consciousness is not just difficult or impossible to prove, but it's fundamentally incompatible with doing that. In other words, when you start talking about unity of consciousness and you start talking about being one with all things, mm. it becomes what? You know, it's impossible to dualistic language. And we've been saying this. Right. We've been saying it. Which adds an additional burden to making it difficult to graph with logic, with the logos. That's because right. what does the logos do? It what? Separates things. Right. So if it keeps separating things, you trying to unify things, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> okay, it says, uh, why? Question is it? Language was created to work exclusively through symbolism and to divide nature into parts and actions. So if we understand what language was supposed to do in the simulated reality, we can see how things have been what? Divided into parts. And we keep talking about, you know, unifying things and bringing things into a whole. But the very thing that we use and call language to try to explain what has occurred, why it's occurring, keep getting in the way because language keeps what? Us under the influence of duality. Right. But when we understand language, not from a dualistic point of view, you see it's an integral part of everything, but language can be holistic too. So, a couple of other points, and then we're going to get right into, you know, just want to explain some coming out of what we just explained. 
we go on to say now it is expedient to look back at what was what exactly occurred to all humanity under the influence of a dual way of looking at everything. Remember, there's only one way to view everything, and that is from the perspective of the whole. Any other system or way of viewing anything will cause conflict within one's environment. And when I say environment, I'm talking about you first, and then it moves from your internal environment to the external environment, yes, people in places where you are in the physical world. That's absolutely correct, Nasi. And if not reversed in time, we're getting to the point now, and if not reversed in time, we lead to the destruction of the whole. Mind you now, we're talking about destruction of everything being connected. We see that then occur. <laughs> We're trying to connect things up again. Right. Not understanding that they've been what? Disconnected through this dual way of seeing things. Because everything is a mental construct. Remember now, everything is a mental construct. The objective of the scientific social engineers was is to create a social system that would appear to be similar or in harmony with the ecosystem of nature. For the ecosystem of nature is the complex of a community and the first community is you and its environment, you, your functioning, as an ecological unit in nature, not separate, not separate. The major problem of our time cannot be understood in isolation, separation, division. They are systemic problems, yes. interconnected and interdependent. The new paradigm that is now emerging can be described in various ways. It can be called a holistic worldview as opposed to a dualistic worldview, seeing the world as an integrated whole rather than a disassociated collection of parts. It can also be called an ecological view if the term ecological is used in a much broader and deeper sense that it is commonly used. The broader and deeper sense of ecological is known as deep ecology. Now, deep ecology don't separate nothing from nothing. Shallow ecology does. Deep ecology, shallow ecology. <laughs> so, now, let us move toward a little bit more simplistic way of putting this together. And we're going to title everything that we're talking about today a formula to weaken and yet at the same time energize. Now, I want you to think about that. Uh -huh. A formula to weaken and yet at the same time energize. Don't that sound like duality? If you think if you're gonna be weakened and you're gonna be energized, those are what? Those are two opposites, right? Mm -hmm. But this is what happens when you possess a mind now. That's right. This is where it happens here. When you think you what got a mind and someone what program you and tell you that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't. Once you accept that, you've been programmed to run on that. Now here comes someone else coming and tell you just the opposite. Now what happened? Now with you being inverted to believe that you've been programmed to, anything else comes to convert you, you're gonna have what? Conflict with your inversion. 
because you program to function that way. You believe that that's the way it is. Cognitive uh, dissonance. Uh, cognitive dissonance. An illusion. Right. Deception. All of those terms play a major role. And all this occurred through manipulation of what you call your mind. So, title, a form into weaker and yet at the same time energized. Okay. Once you become conscious, now remember what we're talking about, overarching consciousness, everything being unified. So we, Father said here, and this is a quote from Imitation of Life, page 69 and 70, where I'm reading from. And he says, once you become conscious, you thus continue to develop your consciousness to the highest level possible. Now, now I, I want us to understand consciousness beyond just awareness now. Because if you talk about just becoming aware, well, how aware is it? Become? So if awareness, that's all consciousness is, then it don't have a unified, you know, saying, um, significant or connection, you know. So I want us to understand consciousness a little bit. Now I'm going to give a definition right after the next, next uh, sentence. It says, higher consciousness, and this is your key sentence here, higher consciousness increases your dynamic energy. Yes, sir. Now, let's say lower consciousness, as he talked, got the uh, cone up here now. Let's look out at the bottom. We say the lower consciousness is 20 is shame. Okay? Higher consciousness, if we go up to 700, we would say you're enlightened. Now, that means that one at the bottom knows nothing compared to one at 700. No comparison. None. No way for him to understand the same thing. That's correct. Absolutely impossible. Now, I see you're not oh. even living in the same world. Absolutely. Right? Not even living in the same world. See things totally different. Never even seen the person before. But once you come in contact with him and try to work, communicate from your level of enlightenment and his level of shame, Y'all can't even have a conversation. Not speaking the same language, Nasi. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Higher consciousness increases your dynamic energy and becomes the source. Wait a minute. I'm going to stop right there. So consciousness becomes a source. And this is what we got to understand. It ain't just awareness. It's the source. Right. Our consciousness increases your dynamic energy and becomes the source. Don't get a higher consciousness. Don't have dynamic energy. And see, do you have a source to turn to for a sustained higher development? I say absolutely you can. Impossible. So I read that sentence again. Higher consciousness increases your dynamic energy and becomes the source for sustained higher development. Now, let's deal with consciousness so that we can understand what consciousness is. We got to see consciousness as the creative power of the entire universe. Now, are we a part of the entire universe? Exactly. So, going back to the brother again, going back to everything is internal. So that means now we got to what? Activate the subconscious element or the id within ourselves. If not, if we don't do that, then you will not have a source to what? Develop any level of consciousness. 
And I say, and you certainly cannot sustain, you understand, oneself. So now, without the ability to sustain oneself, you must disappear from what? From sight, from the clinical eye. It's called death. Continue on. Now, I see. Now, go ahead, Etai. You had talked about uh, activating that energy in the subconscious. Now, again, this goes to language now. It, it cannot be activated through dualistic language at all. It Absolutely not. Activated through holistic language. And holistic language, very simply, is symbols. It's symbols. It's the sigils, holistic language, nonverbal. Got you, got you. Because if it's in the subconscious, ain't nothing happening in terms of verbal. Uh, you know, it's being That's spoken. Correct. You, you, you ain't even aware it's there. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's totally isolated so, from that world. Go right ahead. Right. So. Now, keep this in mind, with this higher consciousness, which becomes the source of your dynamic energy, he said, on this plane, on this plane of higher consciousness and the source of your dynamic energy, on this plane, the individual will become consciously aware of the subconscious influences and the forces or power both internal and external which in the past have shaped his life now don't get to that plane and you will never know how the subconscious influences and power and forces both internal and external they work together you will never know they have shaped your life now this is very important here. You've got to get to this high level of consciousness which becomes the source for your dynamic energy and for sustaining higher development. And this is done through holism. This is done through holism. That's the beginning of it. I'll read it again. On this plane, the individual will become consciously aware of the subconscious influences and the force, both internal and external, which in the past have shaped his life, nature, and have impacted upon even the functioning of the universe. Nothing is disconnected. And I know Everything we've said up to this is, seems very complex. It seems so hard. It seems like, man, he's just talking in circles. But remember, keep it simple. Everything is connected. Let's just start there. You got to keep saying that to yourself. I'm an integral part of everything. Nothing is outside of me. I'm activating, causing all things. Absolutely. That's a place to start. Abba Benami, page 69 and 70. Now, consciousness, the creative power of the entire universe. That's what consciousness is. Dynamic. It's a dynamic energy. Etymology of dynamic means to be able. So, are we saying then that without dynamic energy, you're not able? Absolutely. Okay. Definition one is they all are relating to physical power, force or energy. So your dynamic energy has everything to do with your consciousness, which is the creative power, or we could say it is the what we call the divinity of yourself. It is the divinity of yourself, consciousness. It's the divinity of the creation. It is what? What we've been calling God, what we've been calling Yah.
And, you know, when language comes to play, and then someone define, you know, what God is or what, yeah, outside of what I just said, you know, now you're in a dualistic way. You're going to have to what? Follow the programming that you've been what, raised to believe. And if you, you know what I'm saying, don't hold fast to that, then you're going to what? Certainly reject anything else that does not fit that program. And when that happens, now confusion set in. Confusion set in. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm, now all of a sudden we lose, you understand, the true, you know, energy or thought or idea or spirit to actually what? Forge on beyond what you've been programmed, you understand, to believe, you know? And if you don't, you're going to what? Reject anything that doesn't fit the program. And as a result, this is what happened by rejecting. Since energy, you know, now dynamic energy, you know, you're talking about physical power, you know, force of energy, giving you the ability to be able to accomplish things. Energy is essential to the achievement of any objective. In spiritual warfare, energy is not destroyed. So, in spiritual warfare, in an energetic warfare, energy cannot be destroyed. He said, let us consider this from a mathematical perspective as the errant spirit develops a formula to weaken and yet at the same time energize. Now remember, this is the title of what we're dealing with, the errant spirit. And of course, you know, we say that the, the errant spirit, you know, is the devil, you know. <laughs> no. The errant spirit the spirit of opposition to wholeness, spirit of division, separating, spirit of logos, logic. It says, in math, it is called a reciprocal or inverse, inverse proportion. Now, inverse, something of a contrary nature or quality. So now, what is this, you know, uh, contrary nature or quality that is plaguing humanity? And it seems to be such an enemy that humanity cannot come to grips with it because humanity keeps believing that this quality is a spirit or a deity outside of them somewhere, either in the earth, underneath the earth, or somewhere, you understand, out in the clouds, somewhere outside of them. Now, but contrary to nature, if I perceive myself as being anything other than an integral part of nature, integral part of creation, wouldn't I see myself in opposition? Of course. But you got to see yourselves as being an integral part of nature, not contrary, not in opposition, you know. So this is why it was so important to invert, you know, this whole programming, scientific social engineering created inverted energy, you know. Now, okay, goes on to say, this is energy turned to a contrary direction, changed from what was the normal order. Well, first, if we don't identify what the normal order was, you know, now what 
It's written scriptorally. This is where we become confused. Good and evil. Now, duality. What's good or what's evil? So we may say, well, what's good is right and what's evil is wrong or false. But again, what is good? What would we define good to be? Good would be defined upon a law of morality, a principle of what? Same thing, you know, keeping the law, violating the law, doing the law, you understand, rejecting the law, not following the what? The program order. Okay, but let's look at the normal order another way. Let's look at the normal order of being holism, holistic. Let's look at the normal order of being holistic and not good or evil, right or wrong. Let's look at it being an integral part of all things. That's the normal order, everything connected. Nothing disconnected. He said, well, now we return to the two forces good and evil, right and wrong, God and Satan, which have two different perceptions of this expending of evident energy. One perception is that the person is highly motivated and energetic. The other, in contradiction to this, is that this person is inert. Now, not one individual that I know that's moving around in the physical body and perceiving himself to be inert. Because if he's moving in the physical, he's really think that he's living. Because they've defined movement, uh, living as moving. And I'm going to give you a definition of inert. Now, inert means having no inherent power of action. And now, if we say inert having no inherent power, because well, now somebody inverted, you know, then turn you inside out, making you believe that your power is external instead of internal, making you believe that something else is more powerful than you and you owe your allegiance to something outside of you as opposed to you understanding that you are an integral part of all things that exist then when that occurs motion or your ability to resist is just like inert matter or what you would call something that does not have an inherent ability to move or to do things. You become what? Inactive? So in other words, to do something about your condition, you become inactive. You are waiting for somebody else or something outside of you to do something to cause things to happen to change condition for you or without life chemically not lacking or not able to react chemically to form compound. So inert meaning having no inherent power of action. In other words, you can't do anything about it. You can't resist because there's no motion. Inactive. Now, under this predicament, it only comes into existence when you come under the influence of being programmed by the, you know, the matrix of this physical construct, believing in, quote unquote, the mind element. Now you become inert because now you're programmed to believe that everything exists outside of you and you depend upon that you know outside force to be there to change condition
So what we did, we went a little farther. And we brought up a question. Scientific social engineering says the engineers played a major role here because what happened was the definition for engineering, it says a noun, 1720, 1B. It says calculated manipulation, calculated manipulation or direction as of behavior. So now an engineer, a scientific social engineer's role is to calculate how to manipulate one's direction instead of you, you understand, having a behavior and a consciousness for ascension cause you to have a lower level of consciousness to keep you in the direction of what descent. Believing that you are descending. Believing that, you know, you can't get out of your predicament. That's the objective of the engineer. And it goes on, number two, it said the application of science and mathematics by which the properties of matter being you, you know, matter and spirit, and the forces of energy in nature are made useful to people. Well, they are made useful for some people to use against other people in structures like, you know, social system, like machines, car, etc. Products that you can use, you understand, that is detrimental, and also some that are good, and systems and processes so we find that's the role of an engineer you know now when we look a little further at manipulation you know let's look at this word manipulate because now this becomes very very important when we understand Okay. One second. Just one second. Okay. Manipulate. It says a verb transit eighteen thirty one. It says to manage or utilize skillfully. B, to control a play upon by artful, unfair, or insidious means, especially to one's own advantage. Well, now when we look at, you know, the engineers of this particular simulated reality, you see, we always say that he's been what? Unfair, you know, and he's what? In control, but all that what? Unfairness and the control is all taking place within the simulated mind matrix that he has what? Programmed us to believe. And that element of the divinity, the id of us being in the subconscious, you know, under the influence of the shockers that have been shut down in our devolution, you know, it's impossible, you understand, to see that all of this, you know, is taking place within, you know, <clears throat> within you. So continuing on, it says, insidious. It says, waiting to waiting a chance to entrap, to become treacherous, harmful but enticing. Now, here we recognize 
that many things that you know are harmful but we see on the other side it becomes harmful it may be enticing so the enticing element becomes very seductive and once we come under the influence of that enticing seductive element it creates a gradual and cognitive effect and once you now you look up you know we can just take cancer you know what happens that cancer starts based upon an unseen element within the system which in the process of time a gradual accumulation occurs and once that gradual accumulation occurs it's going to have an effect but what happens with the effect the effect is subtle and what happens they were, with this subtle say it develops so gradually as to be well established before becoming a parent isn't that what happened with cancer exactly what happened Absolutely. so we see the manipulation element of you know the scientific social engineering in this physical realm of what we've you know emanated into and why it's so vital for us to understand you know how important it is for us to become totally and whole and complete you know again so continue on it says scientific social and then create inverted energy what effect did it have upon the community's perception and function at this point of our awareness this is a question can we safely say that we do not need to reconsider how we are viewing things in respect to what was formerly the normal order before the inversion two questions back to what back the formula to weaken and yet at the same time energize is to ensure failure because it's dual nature of deception that's how it's a guaranteed failure the dual nature you know of weakening in front because truthfully speaking how are you going to be what you know weaken and at the same time uh you know uh strength and form how are you going to be weakening at the same time strength and energize so when we continue on we say one perception is that the person is highly motivated the second in contradiction to this view is the person is inert in simple terms an inert person or people are not likely ever to put all the pieces together in order to see the complete picture now this is the dilemma that all of humanity has fallen victim to being inert and have not been able to put all the pieces together this is why i will call in these particular sessions that we have in online has played a major role and continue can, will continue to play a major role and helping us to see things from a holistic perspective so that we can you know put all the pieces together to see the whole picture because if we don't see the whole picture we're going to see things in part and as long as we see things in part our perceptions is going to be what division separation we will never ever get out of the matrix so we're going to hold right here and ask everybody is everybody all right and any questions or comments at this point before we continue on all right we're back so in simple terms an inert person of people are not likely to ever put all the pieces together in order to see the complete picture being deprived of nerve they are literally afraid of what they see 
they have no power to resist their downward motion. They become eternally trapped in an evil consequence of being controlled by an anti yah and I say it in parentheses, dual way of thinking, force in an anti yah world structure of utter darkness without the ability to comprehend. They cannot escape the pain and suffering because it is relative to the plane of their existence. Only by rising to a higher plane where they will be governed by the greater law, wholeness, can the experience of the lower plane, dual thinking, be avoided. Okay, so that just kind of gives us a little, you know, explanation of what he was saying. Now, coming to the close, are we aware of the far-reaching ramification, consequences or outgrowth of the inversion of the Bray Sheet eternal idea, which became manipulated? Okay, the Bray Sheet eternal idea of wholeness slash unity and the transient idea of good and evil creates the dual idea that leads to division and separation. The day that the consum consumption and conception of the knowledge of good and evil, time was set in motion with the double mind or dual way of thinking, man entered into the eternal cycle of death. I read it again. The brave sheet eternal idea of wholeness, unity, and the transit idea of good and evil creates the dual idea that leads to division and separation. The day that the consumption and conception of the knowledge of good and evil, time was set in motion. With the double mind or dual way of thinking, man entered into the eternal cycle of death. And we use a scriptural reference to verify this. We go to Genesis 1 29. God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for me now the word meat here is kaf lamet kaf lamet means complete and whole so when you saying the tree yielding seed and the earth bearing seed we got to understand this from a holistic point of view because most of the time we were seeing this from a dualistic point of view, meaning that the diet, this was strictly talking about diet here. Right. Okay? This was strictly talking about diet, but we got to see it from a holistic point of view and it's going to verify what we're saying. I read again. God said, do I have given you every herb barren seed, which is up on the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for me, or they would say food. But the word, see, the thing about the Hebrew, yes, the Hebrew used the word okel. Okel is food. But you got to understand it from a holistic point of view. But if you just think it just from a dualistic point of view, you're going to say, oh, it's just food alone. But then when you look at the word cough lime, you understand, you get cough lime, you know, oh, kale, you know, you find here in this building and construction of the language, oh, kale, oh, kale, you know, all this have to do with you know, food. But when you say cough lamet, now you saying, uh-huh, whole or complete. So now let's see how this plays out. The instructions of every herb bearing seed, 
And every tree which is the fruit ye can see, to you it shall be me. The Hebrew word kaf lamet meaning complete or whole. This allegorical symbolic description used in these verses are describing the required method for producing the continuous cycle of life. This can only be done through Kaf Lamed, complete whole as the seed yielding its cycle of life eternal. The, the, the seed of wholeness and completeness and unity, it can only yield out this kind. So it sets you into the what? The cycle of the eternal. Continue on. Just about there, family. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the God, thou mayest free thee. For the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Genesis 2 and 16 and 17. The English translation of the knowledge of good and evil is not to be translated as the consumption of of me food substance alone this is referring also to the application of the instructions of the dual knowledge perceived as being right or good slash true and wrong or evil slash false the day you eat consume or apply this knowledge you shall surely enter into the transit cycle of eternal death. The Hebrew is conveying that one's instruction should always be the application of the knowledge which is complete or whole to be good and right, true and never wrong, or to be evil or false. This is the idea that is associated with physical immortality conquering death. So once we understand these things from a holistic point of view, as opposed to a dualistic point of view, we're talking about a continuation of what we were just talking about there, about moving from one spec, one end of the spectrum to the next, it still is a spectrum of quote unquote holistic way of viewing things. But in the physical element, as we said, we become limited in terms of things that we cannot you understand, visualize as light, you understand, in certain uh in a certain uh, perspective of our physical manifestation. So I want to agree. Thank you, Ty, and the family for allowing me opportunity to express these things. And I hope uh, that we was able to frame it in uh, a way that it gives us a little bit more uh, insight onto uh, this whole inversion process. We have to come out of this inside out, this reverse situation. We got to turn this around. You know, Isaiah the prophet said they call him up, down, down, up, bitter, sweet, sweet, bitter. So that dualistic perspective had led us to this cycle of quote unquote eternal death and in opposition to ourselves and all of everything that maintains our existence. So with that family, uh, wholeness, uh, turn it back over to you time.